Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Liar, liar movie thoughts. Now, I guess I'm going to start with the claw. I. Yeah, briefly, for, for those who haven't, who didn't watch the, the main review I did of this, I've owned this on VHS since, pretty much since it came out, and watched it dozens of times over the years, you know, I, yeah, I consider it, you know, infinitely rewatchable, basically, so, going into some of my favorite gags, I quite like the, you know, the claw, at first, it kind of shows that you know they really care about each other and they they play well together. And then you have you know when other people are trying to do Jim Carrey, it's always like Jim Carrey is Jim Carrey. He can pull it off. But like you have, I think Audrey is her name. You know the the ex saying you know like they have something special. Like what the claw, the claw. And you know that's only when you realize. Yeah, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? It's, okay, okay, he's five. Yeah, but eh, the claw, and she's like, oh, the, the claw, you're scared of the claw. And well, he does it better. And then, you know, Jerry himself tries to do it next. I have something for you, young man. It's the claw. Oh, you're scared of the claw. You're scared of the claw. And it's just so awkward. And she's like, you know what? You don't have to do that. It's, it's okay. And I of course love the the Penn's blue scene, very you know Evil Dead 2. And I guess if you if you just feel like watching another movie with you know possessed hand, you could do worse than Idle Hands, I guess. But yeah, this this whole thing of just you know he's like okay a test something simple something where I can't you know mess up my chances at this this job. Okay, the the pen. Okay, and he just keeps trying to say that it's red, and you know, okay, I'll I'll write it. Writes it on the table. Three exclamation points. It's like his body saying, "Don't don't even bother." The pen is blue, you know. And then he's like, "Stop it! Stop it!" It you know, it continues to write it. It's like you know, not only does his you know, his body. You know, his body cannot do anything other than tell the truth, man. It cannot lie. Not only that, but his hand gets kind of, like, you know, almost vengeful. Like, you know, oh, you, you want to lie. You want to lie still. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write blue everywhere on this table. It's like, stop it, stop it. And then it turns on him. And, you know, he emerges. The pen is blue. The pen is blue. <laughs> Just gets me every single time and just in general when he has to lie like first we see the you know the the various calls that he has to return that his secretary answers you know are you still on vacation no oh okay you know and yeah these various ones and especially the part where he's like trying to, you know, he's, he's like shaking his head while saying yes and, you know, nodding while saying no, yeah. Now, I love the, you know, the description of Mr. Allen, and I find it's even funnier because it's kind of repeated, where, you know, the first time Samantha just asks, it's like, you know, he, you know, like, oh no, I, I have to, you know, I, I don't want to say it, and then it just comes out, and he's just, it's like a, a performance, he just really, you know, throws, you know, out there, and, you know, he says, okay, follow me, and he doesn't think for a second about that, and, you know, as far as I can tell, she is, like, higher in the hierarchy than he is, so, you know, yeah, he's, he's gonna do what she says, even though, you know, that other time he's like, 
you know, he pressed the elevator, Fletcher, and, you know, he runs out. You can run, but you can't hide. This is awesome. Like, she's, you know, like she's a supervillain or something. Yeah. But the, yeah. I do address, you know, in the main review near the end, the problems, the characterizations of the women. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to be doing that in this video, but I do realize that's an issue with... But, but yeah, you know, he doesn't think for a second about that she's clearly trying to ruin it for him. And... So, so yeah, he just follows her. And then he realizes he's at the board meeting and, you know... You were, you were just talking about Mr. Allen and, you know, why, you know, tell him, well, what do you think of him? And she's like gleeful and he's like, oh no, this is, he's like, he's, it's like he's facing a firing squad or something as he rambles off and, and, you know, here, he has to tell the truth. His body is making him tell the truth, but he just, you know, yeah, he's completely resigned. I know I can't lie, so he's a fanatical, you know, just all comes out like that. And especially the, the you know, the end, figuratively speaking, <laughs> he's like about to completely fall apart right there. And Mr. Allen loves it, you know, he laughs at it. And then he's, you know, Fletcher's going through everyone in the, you know, everyone in that board meeting or you know, meeting, whatever. And it, yeah, it's just so funny. And there again, you know, he, the moment he realizes that he, you know, that didn't screw his, screw it up. And finally, he actually has a situation where telling the truth is a good thing. So he's like, jumping in, you know, f full force, just, you know, Simmons is old, and you're an idiot, and just, yeah. Now, the, the, the details of the, the cheating are also pretty funny, like, you know, he, you know, he first meets Miss Cole, and it's like, Miss Cole, I guess, Samantha, and it's like, you know, he, he's trying to make it sound as good as possible. And she's like, eh, you know, it's, to be fair, it's actually, you know, the, you know, he's, he's saying, you know, one single act of indiscretion. Seven, what? Seven single acts of indiscretion. Seven acts of indiscretion, which only one of his, which he has any proof of. You know, and the thing, well, he is a good father. And how does he repay you? <laughs> He's just, yeah. And the, the tape is hilarious. You know, like, you know, everybody is just uncomfortable by it. And, you know, you see the, the, the Latino, of course, nanny who's like, you know, holding, the, covering the, the children's ears so they aren't, you know, so, so, so their innocence isn't robbed by this. And, you know, Jim's just drinking and drinking and drinking, filling up and spits it out. How can it be, you know, oh, come on. How can it be proven that the male tape on that, the male voice on that tape isn't Mr. Cole himself? You're such a better lover than my husband, and the judge is like, "There you go." You know, I I, I should say, you know, th th this was the final role of Jason Bernard. Rest in peace. He is fantastic as the judge. Now, you know, both when he's like playing the straight man and when he gets more, you know, animated and such. The, I I love when he's like, you know, order. Order and Fletcher turns around, knock it off, sit down. <laughs> now the and and of course the the bathroom scene where he's like you know at first is it's just like okay I have to do the case 
Your Honor, would the court allow me one quick bathroom break? Because he's been drink he's been like mainlining that water. So, so is it can it wait? Yes, it can. But I've heard that you know it, it can really damage your prostate and it can be difficult to get an erection or even become aroused. Is that true? It has to be. <laughs> Otherwise, I couldn't say it. In that case, I'll take a short break. <laughs> You know, the it, it goes well with that early one, you know, how are you? Fine. You know, how how are you this, this day? You know, I'm fine. I'm a little upset about a bad sexual experience I had last night. And he's like, I cannot believe I just said that. <laughs> You're young. It'll happen to you more and more. Now, how about we move things along? And also, I love the bit with, you know, when they're saying, you know, all rise for the honorable judge. Stevens, I think it is, and he's like, oh no, and the one person who seems to hear that, who for sure hears that, is like, you know, the person who's, I don't remember the, the job title, but she's like writing down everything that's said, and it's like, what, you, should I write that down? He's like, no, 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 <laughs> and anyway, yeah, the, the bathroom, so he makes it out there, and he's like, what to do, what to do, and he, you know, bangs his head into it because he's so frosty. Owie! Owie! <laughs> and he's running around beating himself up and in walks this other guy and he's like, what, what is going on? What are you doing? I'm kicking my ass. Do you mind? <laughs> and, you know, knocks himself out. Which actually, I realized on this viewing, like, he falls over when Samantha comes and, you know, said, you know where, she, where she gets the description of Mr. Allen. And after he's told Mr. Allen, he laughs and then he falls over. And then he knocks himself, you know, knocks himself out in the bathroom. So he falls over at least three times in the movie. But yeah, you know, the, they come in, you know, the guard brings him in. We found him like this in the bathroom, and he's like, who did this to you? And he describes himself, you know, down to, like, weight and height, and, you know, the, a pitiful, you know, at the end of his desperate rope, and, yeah. And, you know, it's like, well, have, have security search the, the building, you know. I, I will have to just, you know, postpone it until early tomorrow. He's like, Yes, I saved. Unless, of course, you feel that you can proceed. I can. <laughs> it's like, like earlier where he has, you know, he calls the judge for, you know, an extension. And he's like, you know, ill. Am I ill? That is a perfect question for you to ask. Greta, lie to me. You know, and he has, well, ill can mean so many things. I oh, have to take a call from mom. Okay. And, you know, and... Oh crap, I caught him off, I caught off the judge, and stabs himself with the, you know, telephone. In general, I love the telephone, you know, he, I thought it would help my career by making her squeal, and he's like, I can't believe I said that, throws it away, and then a little bit later we see he like, you know, picked up the pieces, and, you know, chain, okay, it's, it's still kind of working, and, after the call, he's trying to like hang up. It's, yeah, I don't know how to do this. It's too far. It's fallen too much apart. Now, of course, unpaid parking tickets. That whole sequence. You know, he he drives, and you know the the cop stops him. Do you know why I pulled you over? Depends on how long you were following me. Oh, <laughs> why don't we just take it from the top? And he goes through the whole. Th is that all, you know, like he, I, I love when people are reacting to him and they're just like, okay, I, it's just, you know, I don't know what to do with this. Okay, go on. Also the guy at the, you know, impound lot where he's like, what, you know, what are you, what are you going to do about it? And the, you've been here before, haven't you? And that all, yeah, just. When they're not even like, what is going on with this guy? Just, okay, just, we're, we're going down this path. Okay, let's, let's see how far it goes. And also when the judge, like, says, the only reason I'm continuing this trial is, you know, this, this freak show is out of my own morbid curiosity. Now...
now it's of course great that several times Fletcher is at the mercy of the law it's very poetic justice now at the end while he does win the case you know that's when he realizes how bad Samantha is and by you know by extension how bad he is excuse me in having convinced her that excuse me that she should get more than she already is asking for you know the that yeah basically maybe if he hadn't done that maybe if he had just said well we're gonna do what's best to to win this case you know I'm gonna do my best to win the case but because he goes into you know the Tina Turner and the whole thing you know yeah it you know he perhaps you know what's it called spurs her on to you know and then that's when he really realizes just how bad she is that she goes there from that you know that you know even having won all that money and with her admitting that the children would be better off with him you know she still wants custody so she can get even more money and it's you know really like you know when she's like grabbing the children away from him and this thing you know it's <laughs> It's maybe a little melodramatic, but it's still, you know, touching, and, yeah. And so, you know, he he loses the promotion he was working for, he's even fired, and, you know, and his career, in, you know, let me, for a second, he, with him not being able to lie. He, you know, he's at risk of losing his promotion that he worked really hard for. Maybe his job, it might ruin his entire career. But then, you know, after he's won that trial, he, you know, he stops to realize, does he even want a job where he has to lie? You know, uh, early on we see him come into work and he's lying to the co-workers to make them feel good. And then the next day, he comes into work, meets the same people, and he's insulting them. He doesn't insult Greta, although, you know, it was pretty, you know, it was a jerk thing to not give her the raise, but that was also before he became a better person. But he doesn't insult Greta, he doesn't insult Mr. Cole, you know, his, his son, his ex. He does not like where he's working, and he he doesn't like the people he's working with he does like the the field we, we see him stick with the field he just he opens his own practice and you know we you know to in order to be a lawyer but be ethical which is arguably an oxymoron but it's the thought that counts now as I say in the review this is where I get into the device again just to restate I've owned this on VHS since it came out, pretty much. I've seen it dozens of times over the years. And I, you know... And again, it's it's kind of... As much as I love the movie, I do try to be honest and say both good and bad in these reviews. And addressing some of the arguments that are made against this kind of analysis it's just a movie yes but it expresses and reinforces the values of the culture in which it was made it's just for children yes but children are a lot more mature than they're often given credit for but they're also very impressionable and for these two reasons I find that we should try to impart good values in our fiction especially in this kind of thing where the this movie is already trying to import impart some good values it's trying to say don't value your job over your family you know don't lie unless you have to and yeah so here the 
you know, I, I already mentioned in the review that, you know, the fact that Samantha cheats, you know, we're supposed to think, well, she, you know, she obviously doesn't deserve the, you know, well, arguably she doesn't necessarily deserve half of his estate, but, you know, basically, yeah, she comes off as really awful. Meanwhile, Fletcher cheats on his ex, and, you know, they have divorced, and we're, you know, we're kind of supposed to forgive him, she kind of forgives him, you know, and it's, there's maybe a kind of, there, there's a contrast between these two families, you know, there, there's at least one child in each, and someone cheated on someone else. And where Samantha is made out to be horrible, both Mr. Cole and Audrey are mostly just, you know, the person it was done to. And, yeah, you know, with Audrey, he ends up back with her. Now, and, and again, that is supposed to be the, the right way. You know, at the end of the movie, it's like, you know, we cheer. That is the idea. Now... I do also find it kind of funny, the the birthday party at the end, I guess she hadn't gotten a boyfriend. I mean, it's it's been a year. She, she said that she's been with Jerry for seven months, but now she's been without a boyfriend. I don't know. We, we don't know. Maybe she was without a boyfriend for that entire year. Maybe she met someone. Maybe, maybe they broke up just two weeks before this birthday. But, yeah, she's not with anyone there, and then, you know, she can reconnect with Fletcher. And it's also, you know, they're having this party entirely by themselves. Like, you know, earlier on, you know, a ton of guests, a uh, clown, you know, which is also a nice cut. You know, he's being dragged away in this happy, 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 yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't, is, is this the, you know, could, could they not get anyone? Is, is, like, is this the after the real party, party? Everything seemed, like, like, did they clean up and spend, like, several hours and then get back into, it doesn't look like there's just been a party, so, yeah, obviously it's written that way so that, the focus is, you know, the, the first party, it's like everyone's here except Fletcher. But now we do kind of need, you know, it's a little awkward if they're going to reconnect in front of everyone and, you know, yeah, that whole thing. Now, without really going into the details of Elevator Gate, the elevator scene in this one you know it's he literally sexually harasses her in you know and it's not followed up on and we never see her again and he doesn't seem to learn he's still objectified it, it would appear at least that when he has max unwished the wish he goes and objectifies that, you know, that woman at the, you know, kindergarten or something, school, I don't know, and, yeah, it's, it also, you know, the, the movie itself objectifies the, the woman in the elevator, you know, the camera leering at her and her only being there for the one joke, and basically, what Jim Carrey says is, you know, ab about other women. It's, you know, also when he, you know, insults the other lawyer and such, you know, he's saying what the script is saying they are, basically. You know, he's, it's supposed to be, yeah, and, you know, kind of what also the audience is supposed to be thinking. And the but, but yeah you know what what he says is what you know he says why what he says expresses why she's actually there you know he 
they're saying that if someone, you know, if an attractive woman is doing well, is, is being treated well at her workplace, it's probably because she's being, you know, the, yeah, because the guys think she's hot and, you know, now, yeah, so, and it culminates in her punching him, which doesn't fix anything, and it, you know, it's possible, and going by, you know, what we hear, probable that she faces subject objectification all the time, maybe on the on a daily basis, and she may not have a way, to, you know, a constructive way to address it. You know, the the fact that she uses violence, and you know, so does the the woman at the kindergarten or whatever, means that they don't think they have, or you know, they, that they don't have, or they don't think they have other options. And, you know, punching other people when they're openly objectified, you know, if they keep doing that, they're going to be fired, they're going to get bad recommendations, they might even be arrested. And while this, this was less visible when the film was made, it was still a problem. And the movie itself brings this up and then doesn't deal with it. It would be worse if this was in a film made today, but still. And again, this is in part because the movie is trying to impart some good values, but the women, the female characters are genuinely, generally treated badly. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.